time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious, I guess technically it's really the, well, almost the last weekend of March. I was going to say first weekend of April, but that's not true. So last weekend of March. Where are we? What time is it? <laughs> Well, Rob, we're, uh, we're coming into April, and I'm mad because Villanova lost in March Madness. It's going to happen. They're not as hot as last year, but uh, it's nice to see they were in the tournament that they uh, even made it as far as they did, Bob. Yeah, that's so true. They did take the Big East title, and uh, I know they have a great recruiting class, so let's look forward to next year, Brian. Next year, the Cats are going to do it again. It's always next year. It's always next year. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about commissions and fees. How much is your investment portfolio really costing you? We're going to break down how to find out exactly what you're paying on your portfolio. We're going to talk about financial excuses. What rationalizations are you making with your financial planning? Bob and I are going to discuss the financial excuses you need to stop making right now, along with this week's financial propaganda, where we call it the worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And we have our spotlight segment today. We have our colleague, Jen, financial angel on the show, and she's going to break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's hop to it. You know, Bob, in our, I'd say now, collective 60 plus years of experience in the financial services industry. That's a long time, by the way. Uh, we have found that there's no such thing as a free lunch when you're working with a financial advisor. Therefore, one of the most important questions you need to ask is how much is it costing me to have my money managed? So, Bob, I thought, why don't we break down the different ways that a financial advisor actually gets paid? That's great, Ry. I think um, the three ways are fee only, fee based, and commission. Now, as an investor, what's your favorite, Rod? Right? What's the least favorite? What would you choose? What would be the last way you'd want your advisor to be compensated? Oh, wow. Well, let's start with the what we would call really the, the old school, Bob. And to me, the old school when it comes to working with a financial professional is a commission-based salesman. Well, let's talk about commission, Rod. Right? When, you, um, you know, when you buy a car, how does that salesman get compensated? I mean, he gets a big commission when he sells you that car. So ideally, he wants to get as many features in that car as possible because that makes that commission check even sweeter. How about a real estate agent? How do they get paid? Uh, they're selling you the biggest house they possibly can, Bob. <laughs> that way, they get the most commission for them and for their firm. And that's basically what happens when you have a financial professional selling you an investment and it's they're compensated by commission. Just think car salesman. No, no but you know what, Ryan? Think used car salesmen. It's even worse. Just run. Do not buy products that are commission based. And a lot of times you don't even know it, Bob, because you know some of the more common ways that you're paying a commission are, like for instance, a lot of these annuities where they'll tell you there's no fee, quote unquote. But the reality of it is, it's embedded somehow into the cost because a lot of times when these annuities are sold to you, the commission salesman is getting a big commission up front. A lot of these mutual funds that you buy with the brokerage houses or these you know, different exotic brokerage products, things like structured products that can be sold to you. So a lot of times you don't even know what that commission is. Well, so true, right? So what's the other way? I mean, if you could have fee only, how's that work? Well, the other way is right. Fee only would be someone, you go to a financial planner, they give you a game plan up front, they charge you for their time, and then they just implement the plan or you implement the plan, excuse me, and then it's just like hope for the best. It's hope and pray that the strategy actually works. So there's no real skin in the game for the advisor once they set up your portfolio or give you advice initially. And what I found over my 45 years is that having someone side by side with you, helping you to stay invested, helping you to stay on that path to financial independence is really the key to having a professional advisor. So how are they compensated? Right. So the last and what we would call maybe the new school, Bob, is a fee-based advisor where they charge you a percentage of the assets that they manage. 
So, you know, two things there. Number one, there's an ongoing fee, but there's always skin in the game because that advisor then has to monitor your portfolio. They got to continually earn your business. And most importantly, Bob, they're what we call a fiduciary. What the heck does that mean? That's a big word, Rye. You know, that's a big word, fiduciary. What does that mean? (laughs) I like to use only big words, Bob. Uh, Fiduciary (laughs) means basically you have to act in the client's best interest. They have to act in your best interest. And the big brokerage houses don't have to follow that rule, Bob, which is huge. So would you want to work with somebody who has to, by law, act in your best interest or someone who actually doesn't? Yeah, it's actually when when you have a fiduciary working for you, they despise commissions because it takes away from their client's performance. And, you know, when you have a big bank or a brokerage firm, you know, the the fact of the matter is if they're not a fiduciary, they don't represent you. They represent themselves. They represent the financial institution that pays them. And their job is to get the most return for the firm, not for you, which is really counterintuitive. Well, and you and I, we come from one of the big brokerage houses. I'm not going to name names, but a lot of times their in-house products, which they made the most money on, tend to pay out the biggest commissions back in the day. And I don't think it was any coincidence their products would get sold more to their client base than other products because there was a lot more uh, incentive to sell those things. So those things really go on. Let me get this straight. The U.S. government wants to have a fiduciary rule where every advisor, every financial professional has to put your interests first. And you're telling me that the banks and Wall Street are fighting it tooth and nail? I know it's shocking, Bob, but yes, they are. I mean, it's kind of scary. They, they don't want to act in your best interest and they're lobbying the government so they don't have to do it. And they've actually won. That's the scary part. So I think that's- Well, you know what? It's not, and it's not just the financial advisor. It's also it's like firms like T. Rowe Price and, and Fidelity. You sit down in a Fidelity office and they said, now, Ryan- um, I think that uh, you should have bonds, and, and we think the Fidelity Fund is the best one to have. And you should be in the stock market. We have six Fidelity Funds that you should buy. You know, I mean, they, don't, they don't recommend lower cost options with better performance. Which actually brings me to my next point, Bob. No, they don't. <laughs> is, oh. <laughs> so number one, you have the commission you're going to pay up front, which you need to find out mm-hmm. about. Or you're going to pay a fee base, which is very transparent, but you'll know what that fee is. But then there's the next layer, those internal costs, the ongoing fund costs that you don't see. And we always say it's the devil you don't see. A lot of times is worse than the devil that you do when it comes to fees. So you really need to know what those internal costs are. And those annuities, Bob, is another big culprit where the fees can be so high on inside. Well, well, wait a minute, Ryan. Now, all all those fees are disclosed up front in that big fat prospectus that comes in that white envelope that all of you throw out, you know, when you get your first confirmation. So let's be clear, it is disclosed, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, they're hard yeah. to find unless you know how to dig. Yeah, go to the 200th page with your magnifying glass and you can find those fees. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, wow, there's a lot of fees here, there's a lot of complexity when it comes to how I'm being charged. Uh, and you want to know exactly what you're paying and what you're doing, here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. Simply bring in those statements. April's almost here. You can print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we're going to look at everything from a bird's eye view in one place. And then we're going to look at all those critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. We're going to show you all the external internal costs you don't even know you're paying on your portfolio. We're going to show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical. How are you going to replace your income when you're retired? If you're retired now, how are you going to generate income? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in your income gap. And we're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard in December when the market sold off? Is your portfolio protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof or safeguard your portfolio in retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? And all you have to do is call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. If you are one of our next 10 callers, you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. 
Now there's no obligation, there's no cost, but there won't be any plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne and I'm with my son, Rye Payne. And we're the Paynes, no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain market update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. And interest rates fell across the globe this week, led by the 10-year Treasury bond, whose yield dropped below 2.4%. That's the lowest level in 15 months. In Germany and Japan, their 10-year bond yields are now negative. That's right. You actually have to pay them for the privilege of lending your money to them for 10 years. Well, the good news, of course, is your bond portfolios all hit new highs for the year. See, it's just like the teeter-totter or the seesaw in your playground. As one end goes down, the yield, the other end goes up, your price. So the decline in the 10-year treasury caused part of the yield curve to invert. Now, that's a fancy way of saying that the yield on the three-month treasury bond is slightly higher than the yield on the 10-year treasury bond. That caused every talking head in the financial media to point to a coming recession, simply because every recession since 1962 has been preceded by a yield curve inversion. But not every inversion has been followed by a recession. See, that's like saying the economy is going into recession because we had a full moon last week, and every recession in history has been preceded by a full moon. Moreover, the real yield curve is, was, and will always be the three-month treasury bill to the 30-year treasury bond. And that is nowhere near inversion. Now, as for the stock market, we just had the best quarter in a decade. And if history repeats, we're in for further gains in 2019. In nine out of 10 times since 1950, when the market returned more than 10% in the first quarter, it went on to post double-digit gains for the year. So inverted yield curves, talk of recession, Slowing global growth, like all worries, are concerns, but they're not certainties. And it's uncertainty that leads to volatility and the dips that should be bought in a big, booming, secular bull market. If you're sitting there and you're uncertain about your portfolio, whether it's appropriate to your risk, to your goals, to your dreams, why sit there and wonder when you could know? Simply give us a call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844-752-6692. Let's see what people are saying about those other financial guys out there. I wish you could just shut your big yapper. Looks like you'd better stick with us. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I are simple men. So yes, we like to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. You can text the word bullish to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law. Get up to speed with the new tax reform. Taxes are right around the corner. This is your guide just to get you up to speed on what's new, what you should be doing. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, very often the financial decisions we are making really aren't the best decisions, but we try to create excuses or rationalizations for why we're still doing it. Let's talk about why these excuses really don't hold water. And one we hear really often is when you have no idea what you're really invested in or what your money's really doing, you may say to yourself, I have money spread out with a couple different advisors, so I assume I'm diversified. You know, why does that not make sense? Well, it doesn't make sense, Ry, because from our experience, uh, having met with thousands of people who've said that, they typically have lots of eggs in lots of different baskets. But what they don't realize is all the eggs are the same. Yes, it's the great irony of investing by spreading your money out with different institutions, different advisors. When you put it all in one spreadsheet like we do, you find out you own all the same things everywhere else. <laughs> it's, and it's even it worse than that, right? 
because you know, as, as average normal human beings, people like to invest in what's working at the time. So what happens is each custodian you work with ends up putting you into what's most popular at the time, which is about to probably become unpopular. And when it does, you don't lose a little bit, you get slaughtered. Yeah. And the only time you find that out is times like December when the market sells off hard. Like for instance, tech stocks were one of the worst performers in December when the market sold off. That's been the most overcrowded trade in the market. So if you look at your portfolio, you may have owned too much in Apple, Amazon, Facebook, all those stocks got pummeled, Bob. Yeah, so true, Ryan. It's so easy for us to see that because we put it together, you know, with technology. But when you're sitting there at home, you're getting all these statements in the mail. Last thing you want to do is sit there and say, "Oh, what's the difference between the contra fund and the growth fund and the value fund and that fund?" You know, what happens is they typically just start shredding the statements, thinking, "Oh, I'm taken care of because I'm diversified." Yeah, and that's the problem: is all these funds have different names, but when you start looking under the hood per se and looking at the actual positions, they all own the same freaking thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm so kind of thinking they do it on purpose, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really important. Again, you don't want to find these things out when the market's already capitulated and you're in panic mode. You want to do that proactively. It's so important, right, to know what you own and know exactly why you own it. That's why you need that analysis. Yeah, and another excuse that we hear very often is when you don't want to leave your broker advisor or even know that you should be, you'll hear something like, I've been working with him for so long or her. I don't want to hurt that friendship or relationship. You know, why is that a bad way to make a decision? You know, right. Last week you were talking about all these uh, retirement commercials where they show you, you know, sailing, sitting on the beach, playing golf, you know, sitting in a bathtub, holding hands with your spouse, <laughs> you know, all these different images. Just think about that. When you're in retirement, do you really want your advisor sitting on the beach chair next to you or sitting in the golf cart with you? Or do you want them back in the office working in your best interest? Yeah, no, exactly right. I mean, you first off, yeah, you want someone who's probably not at the end of their career too, because you don't want to retire with your financial advisor. But the other thing is a lot of times like you might not be happy with something or you know you're not getting the best advice, but if it's your best friend, it's really hard to have those conversations like, hey, I want a financial plan done, but you're not doing that for me. That, that can be very awkward, right? I mean, it, it, you can't really say the things you want to say. Well, really, I've been in this business for 45 years and you know, I have obviously you in a succession plan and your brother, so if something happened to me or if I ever decided to retire, our clients would be well served and there's a consistency in the chain of advice. When we worked at uh, some of the bigger firms, what happened when you retired, right? Didn't they just distribute your, your clients' accounts out to the boardroom to the youngest advisors? Yeah, who have no idea what they're doing. And there's nothing like changing course in the middle of retirement. You don't want to do that. You want to set up a game plan that's going to be consistent the whole way through and not have to have some kind of dramatic change uh, somewhere in the middle of it and then have to completely trust someone new all over again. And the other thing is too, you want to have that second opinion and that's the best way to do mm -hmm. it. You want to go and see, make sure if you're working with a friend or somebody suspects not doing everything right, maybe have everything looked at and then you can justify and say, okay, you know, these are things I do need differently. Then you can go back to your advisor and say, these are things I'm not getting right now that I need. You know, Ryan, it's so true, especially after a 10-year big booming bull market. You know, we see people where they're taking too much risk with their money. They often say, oh, I can handle risk. I was able to ride out that last downturn in the stock market. So why would I make my portfolio more conservative simply because I'm 10 years older? You know what, Bob? I think we get the shortest memory when it comes to investing because number one, we always forget how painful it was in the moment, no pun intended. Uh, when that market was selling off in 2008, all the pundits are telling you it's apocalypse now. Maybe you made it through, but you probably didn't make it through unscathed. It was probably pretty frightening. But the problem now is, Bob, you're 10 years older. You can't afford that kind of risk that you could afford 10 years ago. You're in a different place in your life. Yeah, right. That's a, that's a great point because what we forget is is as time passes, we get older and we have less time, you know, in order to recover from a down market. And quite frankly, if you've been a good investor, you've been a successful investor, why would you want to ride through something like that again? Why not create a dependable, repeatable cash flow and just go out and enjoy it and stop looking at the monitor and worrying about the stock market? Yeah, it's like take the risk you have to take because the bottom line is, look, if you get excess return on the upside because you take more risk, it's probably not going to change your life. But if we hit a big bear market where the market tanks and you have too much money at risk, that could be detrimental and affect your life negatively. 
on what you can pull out of your portfolio annually. So, you know, it's just not it's not worth the risk, I think is the bottom line there, Bob. Of course, Rye, then you have the opposite. You know, some of you are taking way more risk than necessary to achieve your goals. But then again, we have some of you who are so afraid of being invested in the next downturn that you have way too much money in cash. Yeah, you hear all the time, well, I lost a lot of, a lot of money in that last market crash and I don't want to go down that road again. Well, the problem is, you know, you need to keep abreast of inflation. We talk about this all the time, Bob. You know, I ran an analysis over the last 15 years. If you had your money in a high yielding money market fund, you lost against inflation over the last 15 years. Same thing's going to happen in the next 15 years. You know, if you have your money just sitting there, you're losing and you need to keep abreast of purchasing power. That's why you have to get into a strategy for the long term that's generating income that's going to get you to your goals. You know, Rye, there are very wise words. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, you know what? I have too many. My portfolio is spread out over too many custodians. I'm taking way more risk than necessary than, than I need to to achieve my goals. I can't handle the risk if we have another big downturn. Well, you know, if you're thinking I need to be financially healthy, well, here's your chance. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, Rye and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need to do. We're going to have you gather all of your statements, put them in a folder, put them in a shopping bag. You know, you don't even have to open the envelopes. Give us a call or text us. We're going to review everything and build your own 360 financial portal that will allow you to become financially organized and view your complete financial life in real terms at your convenience. Not only are we going to list your entire net worth, we're going to take all those statements and break it down into a very simple understandable spreadsheet, which will allow you to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. You'll see if you're fully diversified. You'll see if you have overlap by having all those different statements and custodians. You'll see the hidden cost. You'll see what's being charged over and over and will help you to take those fees out of your advisor's pocket and put it back in your pocket where it belongs. We're going to look at your income. We're going to be able to increase the amount of income, dependable, repeatable income that we all need to have to fill that income gap while we're getting ready for retirement, but more importantly, when we're in retired. Hey, if you're retired right now, your number one goal is to stay there. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we'll answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours to get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, to your point B with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844 844- 752 6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial radio. It's time for financial propaganda of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call up the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the malicious world of financial propaganda? Yeah, Rye, right. the media never lets me down. They always have some reason why the economy is going to tank, why the stock market, the uh, big booming bull market is over. And this week, they pointed to the ominous inverted yield curve. Yes, we've been hearing all about the inverted yield curve uh, since Friday, last Friday. And basically, all that means is the 10 year Treasury's yield went below the three month Treasury yield. And what the heck does that even mean, Bob? What does that mean for the markets, or in theory, anyway? 
Well, what it means is you get less interest on your 10-year bond than you do on your three-month bond. But um, evidently, since 1950, every downturn in the economy, every recession was preceded by a period where short-term rates exceeded longer-term interest rates. Now, not just for one day, for a long period of time. And sometimes it takes six months to two years before we actually go into a recession, right? And that's the problem with this indicator because it says, okay, it's predicting that we're going to go into a recession, which theoretically means the market's going to sell off. So by heeding to this warning sign, you should get your money out of the market into cash. But the problem is, like, to your point, Bob, it could take almost two years before the market actually mm-hmm. goes down. And in fact, if you look at some of the times historically, like back in 1998, the yield curve inverted, well, the market went on to go up 40% before it went down. So it's like there's no yeah. value here. <laughs> and help, this doesn't help us. Yeah, Ron, I think really, if you put it in perspective, you look over in Germany, their yields are actually negative. Japan, the interest rates are negative. So when you look at a 2.5% or 2.4% 10-year bond, the U.S., it looks really attractive to everybody else on the globe. But what it really indicates is that, yeah, the economy is slowing. But guess what? Stock market does really well when we have slow growth because the, the economy doesn't necessarily mean that's what company profits are all about. Yeah, and I think that's the thing we we forget is, you know, people talk a lot, you might be hearing this from the pundits out there, is the economy is slowing down. It sounds like this very negative thing. But what we have to look at is over the last 10 years, the economy has been growing slow for a very long period of time. <laughs> and to your point, Bob, that's actually very good because if it grows slowly, nothing overheats. It's the problem when it's growing too fast. That's when things overheat. And that's when you have these big downturns in the market. Well, that's why the market's up 300% over the last 10 years, Ryan. And it uh, really comes down to you know, ignore financial propaganda, stay disciplined, stay in a strategy based on your goals over the longer term. And then it becomes easy to invest because like this week, we had all our dividends come in. I'm like a kid in a candy store. You know, I'd love it when we have downside volatility. It gives you an opportunity to buy low and and get high yielding dividends as a result of being able to buy low. That's what investing successfully is about, ignoring financial propaganda. Well, given that my article this week was on the yield curve too, Bob, <laughs> since oh. we didn't compare notes before the show, uh, mm. I saw an article out there that said, bond market says not only is a recession coming, but the Fed will cut interest rates to stop it. So let's talk about that for a minute too, because it kind of plays into the same thing. So I think mm-hmm. the one thing we can get from the fact that interest rates are going down as, Bob, is bonds are going to be a very dangerous place to be, specifically bond funds, because rates have come down, and that means that bond prices go up, and that means that money now is pouring into bond funds while yields are really low, which means later that can be a disaster. Why don't you break that down a little bit? Because that's a lot. Yeah, you know, it's so critical when you think about it. Uh, You want to own your bond. You want to have a fixed income portfolio. When When I think about a bond, I want to have an investment where the coupon or the interest they pay me is fixed. You know, that I know exactly how much I'm going to get to the penny. I want to know exactly what day they're going to give my money back, you know, when that loan is over. When you're in a bond fund, it's open-ended. And here's the big problem. When rates go down, bond values go up. That's great for you and I and our clients with their portfolio. But you're in a bond fund. Now you have all these people adding money at two, two and a quarter, one, one and a half percent. And the bond manager has to buy bonds, diluting or taking down the yield that you have in their bond fund. So, right, you took all the risk of buying a bond, and now you're getting none of the reward. You're actually getting penalized because you're allowing other people to invest in your portfolio. And worse, when interest rates finally go up again, you're going to get slaughtered because the prices start going down, and it's like you're in an elevator with lots of people you don't like, and everyone's selling at the same time. <laughs> so it's it's a kind of a trap to be putting a lot of money into bonds now. Furthermore, Bob, you have to look at it this way. The 10-year Treasury bond right now pays like 2.4%, somewhere around there. You can buy a dividend yielding portfolio of over 3% right now, and that dividend or that interest rate is going to rise over time. So as an investor, and you're going to need income in your portfolio, you have to be really smart about it. Number one, you can't put all your money in bonds. You want to have some money in bonds for protection, but not bond funds. You want to own them, but you also need to take advantage of the fact that dividend yields right now are really, really rich. And that's a huge part of your retirement when you're starting to draw from your portfolio is to have a lot of fat cash flow coming in that's going up. And stocks right now are really attractive for that reason. 
Well, they are, right? But you also still have to have bonds. And you know, I just want to mention one thing that the bond fund people will tell you that, oh, yeah, sure, the yield goes down when money money pours in, when interest rates are declining. But just think about how much more yield you'll get when interest rates are going up. Right? How many of your investors, how many of your clients over the last 20 years pour money into bonds when interest rates are going up? <laughs> Never, because if you see the price of your investment going down, you're going to bail. So don't get deceived. Don't follow the herd right now and put your money in bond funds too, because that's where a lot of money is going. And when the herd's going somewhere, Bob, we learned from experience, you don't want to be in that same line, man. <laughs> that's not the place to be. Once again, Rye, that's why we call bond funds. Heads you lose, tails you lose. I love that. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, yes, I need a strategy here. I don't know how to put my money in stocks, bonds. I'm afraid of interest rates. I'm afraid of the inverted yield curve. I need a real strategy for my retirement. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the whole picture, a real financial plan. All you need to do is bring those statements in. It's going to be April. You have them all ready to go this month. Print them, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal so we can get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture in one place. And we're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at those investments and diversification. Do you have a lot of money in bond funds right now? Are you going to be hurt if interest rates go up? Did you get hurt when the market sold off in December? We're going to show you how to diversify or properly safeguard or protect your portfolio in retirement. We're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios. Those mutual funds, annuities, insurance products. We're going to show you where all the hidden cost is, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. How are you going to replace your income when you stop working? If you're retired now, how are you going to draw from your portfolio? And we're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio in the most tax-efficient manner. And then we're going to tie it all together and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. Text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will run for you, your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. Six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. Hey, I'm Bob, and I'm with my son Ryan. We're the Pains. No pain, no gain. Financial Radio. This is no pain, no gain. Now back to the show. It's no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you get the most common sense advice for your planning and investing, and that's why we put together our latest guide highlights from the new tax law just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law, what you need to know about the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. You can subscribe to the show. You can get some links to other sites, other things that we like. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to BeBullish.com. And you can catch myself and most of our financial advisors on all the major networks every week from CNBC, Fox Business News, Yahoo Finance, talking about our latest thoughts in the economy, the market. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us directly at questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us with questions this week, we have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood. 
I like, I like the way I said that. How you doing, Mark? Hey, hey. Welcome to April, gentlemen. Hopefully the weather will start to break. Oh, I'm ready. Of course, I already have the first coating of pollen on my car, so... <laughs> Nice welcome to all of us. The allergies are back. Everybody's favorite time of year, really. That's right. That's right. Allergies and pollen and uh, lots of rain. And but you know what? Warm weather is, is I like warm weather. It so brings the beach and it brings golf. And there's nothing wrong with either of those two activities now, is there? <laughs> and it brings pollen. <laughs> well, we got a couple of great questions that have come in this week, as always. Let's take one from Mary in Scarsdale. Mary says, Bob, I'm considering the purchase of an annuity to help shore up my retirement income needs. The purchase would represent about half of my investable assets. Is that too much? Hey, Mary, that's a great question. And again, it, uh, when, you, when you talk about investment products, whether it's an annuity or a bond or a stock, you're kind of putting the cart before the horse. What you really need to understand and what you really want to figure out is exactly how much income do you need in retirement. I mean, Ryan talks about it ad nauseum every week that we have to fill that income gap so you're on the right track, but it's only the beginning. What you need to do is run through what we call an A to B analysis. Right, Ryan? What is A to B? Yeah, so A to B, basically, it's like reverse engineering. We always say you're going from point A to point B, which is retirement. But what we want to do is start with point B. Let's paint the picture of what retirement could look like, even if you're retired now, what it looks like. And then we go back and then we build the portfolio around what those goals are. We call that the proverbial, Bob, goal-based investing. Yeah, it makes so much sense, right? It's common sense. Only take as much risk as you need to in order to achieve your goals because you have to factor in you're getting Social Security. You may be getting a pension. You may have an inheritance in your future. You may have some royalties from an oil well. Who knows? Some people do. But the whole idea <laughs> is that you have to project that using historical rates of return and taking out that insidious hidden tax inflation to see if you can achieve your goals. And at that point, then you can decide how much risk you need to take and exactly what investment products you should use. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is there's no good or bad investment products, as you like to say, Bob, it's either is it appropriate or not appropriate. The only thing I would say okay. with you, Mary, is putting half your money into an annuity is, and I don't know much about your financial situation, but a lot of times they can be illiquid. And you have to remember this, if you turn on that income stream for life, and that's a very attractive pitch the annuity company gives you that you're going to get income for life, like sign me up, is a lot of times you have to give up your principal and number two, it's a fixed amount of money you're going to get every year for the rest of your life. And you got to remember, your expenses are going to go up over time because of healthcare costs and inflation. So it's not always the best solution, especially putting a large chunk of your money there. Right. You're you telling Mary that uh, buying an annuity is like eating Chinese food. You know, it tastes so good going down, but a half hour later, you still feel empty. <laughs> Sometimes it's that way. It's like, that sounded so great. Now I don't have no idea what I own. So even if you have an annuity right now, you want to know what it actually does. That's important too. Well, thanks for writing in, Mary. Let's take another question now from David. David is in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, and he says, Ryan, I'm getting concerned that we are heading into a recession or large correction soon. My gut feeling is I need to park a good portion of my retirement savings into cash. Is this irrational? You know what I'm going to say here, I hope, if you listen to the show, that is irrational. <laughs> we never want to make decisions based on projections into the future because they're usually wrong. And ideally, David, if you have a portfolio that's set up correctly, you're generating a lot of current income. That means if you sell stuff and go to cash, you, start to, you lose that income stream. So regardless if the market's going up or down, you need a portfolio that's what we would call all weather. You never want to have a portfolio, Bob, where you make it, have to make a decision that I need to get in and out of the market. That's, you know, I would say that's like red flag number one in terms of how you built your portfolio. Well, it's, it really is, right? But even if you could predict these things, let's just think about it. The chairman of the Federal Reserve has more inside information than any human being on the planet. And I remember back in the 90s, our federal chairman, Alan Greenspan, said the market was exhibiting irrational exuberance and that you should get out of the market. Well, it doubled from there. <laughs> now, the smartest man on the planet with the best information can't pick a top. I'm pretty certain David's not going to be able to either. That's a really good point, Bob. You know, we look at the Fed like this this group of this mastermind that can that's all knowing. 
But really, their forecasts are no better than the average of all the recent data, plus maybe a random guess on top. <laughs> so, That's you know, you, true. Just, you can't put faith in these things. You always tell me, Ryan, that economists exist to make astrologists look good. <laughs> That's right. I trust my astrologist over my economist at the end of the day. I actually wrote a piece this past week called Don't Let the Fickle Fed Fool You. They change their mind all the time, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you don't want to have, you know, you don't want to have some government organization or some financial propagandist forcing you into an emotional decision. You know, investing is common sense. You want to focus on your goals and let the A to B strategy work for you. Now, Ry, I have a question for you. Mary and David sound like really good people, but on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized do they appear to be? I'm concerned, Bob. I got to give them a negative. I can't go negative because I think that's impossible on a one to 10 scale. I'm going to give them a one. I'm not feeling very a kind one. this morning. Man, I think you're still I think you're still depressed after Villanova lost this week. But let me ask all of you out there on a scale of one to ten, how financially organized are you? Well, how financially organized would you like to be? If you'd like to be a ten, here's your shot. All you have to do is be one of our next few callers who have saved at least two hundred thousand for your retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own three sixty financial portal. It's a full holistic strategy which will allow you to see in real time what you own, and maybe you'll understand a little better what you own, why you own it, because we're going to display all of your financial goals in real time right on your front page. Not only will you be able to see what your goals are, but you'll see how you're progressing towards those goals, and you'll make all the important common sense decisions to get there. In addition, we're going to take your portfolio. All you have to do is take those last statements, stick them in a shopping bag, put them in a folder, make an appointment. We're going to break down all those various statements into one simple spreadsheet, which will tell you whether you have the three key elements of a successful portfolio. Are you truly diversified? Do you have overlap in your portfolio? Do you own the same thing over and over again, which went down dramatically in December? We're going to look at your cost. You know, I don't know about you, but I really despise being overcharged. And I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. There's lots of hidden costs. We can reveal them. We can show you ways to eliminate them and take those fees out of your advisor's pocket, put it in your pocket where it belongs. Income, we can increase the amount of income or cash flow your portfolio generates on an annual basis. We all know we have to fill that gap in retirement once we no longer collect that paycheck. And if we are retired right now, hey, your number one goal is to stay retired. Income is the key to that strategy. And lastly, we're gonna tie it all together into one total financial master plan, answering that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades? That's right. For 40 years, my family's been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We have a couple slots left if you call or text now at 844-752-6692. 6692 if you have over $200,000 saved for retirement at 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain, Financial Radio. Bob and I, we're simple men, so we like to keep it simple for you, give you common sense advice you can use for your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law, just to get you up to speed with new tax reform. Taxes around the corner. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the New Tax Law, just to get you up to speed with new tax reform. Be prepared. April 15th is around the corner. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888, the word bullish, to 555-888. And now, we have a very, very special guest on our show, 
my colleague, Bob's colleague, Jen, certified financial angel, CFA level two, working on a level three. Mm-hmm. Good to see you this morning, Jen. Good morning, guys. Thanks for uh, joining us. I didn't us know they certified way. angels. Oh, yeah. Just me. <laughs> just oh, <Jenny>. okay. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being on the show this morning. This is our spotlight segment where we take a real financial plan and we uncover the flaws or quote unquote pain points so our listeners can avoid a lot of the same mistakes with their own planning and investing. And you worked on a case recently, so why don't you just give us the uh, the rundown here, Jen? Sure. Yeah, so we uh, did a case, uh, this couple came in um, in their 60s and um, wife is still working. I and mean, the husband recently kind of started doing some more contract stuff. So his current income went down pretty significantly, basically overnight. Um, yes. So they really were really wanted some income. Mm. And we looked at their portfolio and they're sitting in a lot of cash. Ooh. That was a big one. And I, remember I was in the meeting with you and I remember one of the big concerns was, so this guy hasn't been working, uh, more like part-time work, stuff like that. And he's like, I'm watching all the different channels. Some people are saying, get your money in the market. Some people are saying a recession's coming. And he just got so tired of the financial propaganda. He's like, I got I to gotta sit down with somebody because he just don't know which way to go. Yeah, and you know, he, a lot of the questions were, when do we get in? When do we, you know, buy some bonds? When do we buy equities? When do we do this? And like, it's just you got to start. <laughs> yeah, and it becomes paralysis by analysis, yeah. right? It's just like too much information overload, and then you get stuck, and hence you have a lot of money just sitting in cash, earning nothing. Right, and I think the, the by the fear way, Jen, of I've been waiting. I've been waiting forty five years for the bell to ring. It it never rings. <laughs> Are you sure, Bob? I'm positive that the bell never <laughs> rings. The time to invest money, I have always found, is when you have it. Yeah, so cash was a big one, right? And you're basically losing purchasing mm-hmm. power the more you're sitting in cash. You know, with inflation mm-hmm. going up, so that was a big one. And then with, you know, the, the lack of income coming in, they really needed to figure out, okay, you know, what am I going to do with this cash? How am I going to invest it to supplement my lifestyle so I'm not pulling so much from principal as expenses go up or, or continue over time? So really, the big thing was, okay, looking at, what can we generate from an income standpoint to you know make sure they're not have to pull from the principal? Yeah, so he has the proverbial income gap. We know he's got Social Security coming in. He may work again, may not work again, but he wanted to know if they want to keep their lifestyle intact. Can they generate it from the portfolio? And that's one thing we talk about a lot on the show is it's so critical to fill in that income gap, and that was one of his major concerns. Yeah, and just you know, from our analysis, we can generate almost seventy thousand dollars in income, which very much supplements their lifestyle and they can basically live off you know the interest that we can create. Yeah, and it's more than double what he was currently generating. I mean, because right now with all that money in cash and not really invested, he's missing out on all that cash flow. Exactly. And you definitely need to have the growth component as well. So you gotta have the the inflation protection on the on the equity side and then you know the income generation on the and the bond side as well as the dividends coming in. So really both of those was kind of a huge draw. Well, I think the key element of this portfolio is you have an institutionally managed bond portfolio where you actually own the bonds. You have a fixed rate of return. You know the worst that can happen is you get all your money back with interest as opposed to those dreaded bond funds that uh, Ryan and I keep seeing coming in on your accounts. Hate those bond funds. (laughs) Yeah, and the other side of it, we talked about this before, is you get this whole portfolio of dividend-paying stocks, which is increasing over time because the problem is you put all your money into bonds or fixed income or like an annuity, it's the same amount of money coming in every single year. But the problem is you have to account for your cost of living going up over time. And you really can't do that with bonds or an annuity. You have to have some sort of what we call rising cash flow investment. And that's where those dividends are key because they're going to grow over time to keep up with that cost of living, which is huge. Yeah. And I think along with the cash flow, the other big point was, okay, creating a, a tax plan before you hit age 70 and a half where you have that required distribution that'll could bump up your your tax bracket. Yeah. In his case, he wasn't working. It makes sense to start to take money out of his IRAs and put them into a Roth where the money's tax-free forever, along with we also looked at tax-free bonds. So he's generating a lot of tax-free income. So the other thing is like, how tax-efficient can you make the portfolio which you did an awesome job on, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, how come, um, how come, Jen? How come I never see these things on the on on the boob tube? Right? All they ever talk about is the stock market going up or down. They don't talk about income. They don't talk about planning. They don't talk about how to reduce your taxes. You know, everything's a scare tactic on the media. I mean, it just makes so much sense to sit down and have this analysis done. 
Yeah, and it's not a personalized plan when people are, you know, it's a squawk box and all those all those crazy <laughs> things that people are squawking about on the radio and on on TV that, you know, you really need to put a personalized plan in place because everybody's going to be different. Every income is going to be different. Your expenses are going to be different. So really make, putting that personalized plan in place is huge. Yeah, and I, one you of the know, things thank you for pointing that out, Jen. I never realized that it was called Squawk Box because people just get on there and squawk. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably. I wonder where that name comes from. By the way. <laughs> um, yeah, and one other thing too is interesting that that the couple did say was they actually interviewed a ton of different advisors, and the one thing that was different, which I thought was kind of cool, is he said that you actually showed us how you were going to generate the income. Instead of, oh, sign the paperwork, work with us, and then we'll show you, which I think is important if you're looking for a financial advisor, like make sure up front you know what you're getting into. And if they can't show you that, like I wouldn't sign any paperwork. You know, you want to know exactly mm-hmm. what's the game plan, how's that income going to be generated, and I think that's an important component as well. Absolutely. What's the income? What are the costs? What are the actual investments? are huge. Yeah, well, another financial masterpiece, as Bob likes to say, Jen. Oh, thank you. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, uh, I'd like a plan like this. I need to fill in my income gap. I need to get a game plan for retirement. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you give us a call or text right now, myself, Bob, and Jen Financial Angel will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. Look, April statements or March statements are coming in. Print them off the computer put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal and give you a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture in one place. And we're going to look at the same critical components here. We're going to look at income. We're able to do more than double the income for this couple, fill in that income gap so they don't have to touch their principal. How can we help you to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio, fill in your income gap? We're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard back in December when the market sold off? Are you sitting with way too much money in cash, not generating income? We're going to show you how to grow and protect your wealth over time, safeguard your money, and we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in these investment portfolios on those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies we've worked on for over 40 years take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you are one of our next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. No strings attached, but there won't be a plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show this morning, Jen Financial Angel. Amazing to have you. Thanks. Thanks so much. How's the studying coming for CFA Level 3? Oh, it's every weekend from now until June 15th, so (laughs) super fun. (laughs) That's why I feel even... Especially honored that you could fit us in for the show between studying, seeing clients. I mean, I don't know how you do it. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> big Bob, what's on tap for the rest of the weekend? Well, Rob, we've got a big week coming up. It's the beginning of April, and I'm going to try and dodge those April showers to get ready for those May flowers. That's why you're in Florida. Well, have a great rest of the weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.